Okay, so um, in this video, what we want to do is basically do a couple of examples related to the cross multiplication method. And the cross multiplication method was basically something like this, meaning that we had something like um, x and y and 1 over here, and then b, c, a, b, I suppose, b, c, a, b, and this was b1, b2, c1, c2, a1, a2, b1, b2, and the, we had this, this cross multiplication over here, and then based on this, there was a formula that we had, which was basically uh, x over x over b1 c2 minus b2 c1 b2 c1 is equal to y over a2 c1 a2 c1 minus a1 c2 which is equal to 1 over a1 b2 minus a2 b1 a2 b1 so this way you can find your x your y uh, based on the based on the coefficients of the of the of the two equations that you have the equations being a1 x plus b1 y plus c1 is equal to 0 and a2 x plus b2 y plus c2 is equal to 0 if you have a pair of linear equations in two variables and a1 b1 c1 a2 b2 c2 are the coefficients then you can use this formula in order to find the find x and y basically the two variables in in in, in those two in that situation and we talked enough about how to derive this formula and the whole story so now let's use it a little bit with a few examples see how basically see how we can actually use it okay but one thing that that you need to be careful about is that writing your equations in this way it, it it there is a whole lot of room for making mistakes so you have to be careful about the positive negative and negative positive and so on and so forth otherwise you can make mistakes uh, for me personally it's easier to do my to to solve my problems this way rather than just using a formula like this i'm not very comfortable with this kind of calculation um, well i i mean i prefer the other the, the manual way but let's see I mean, it might actually be in some situations, it might, it might actually be easier to use the other one. I mean, it, it, it could actually save you a whole lot of time and effort to, to basically change the shape of your formula so you can, for example, do uh, substitution or elimination, okay? So let's say that you have, for example, um, x minus 3y x minus 3y minus 3 is equal to 0 and you have 3x minus 9y minus 2 is equal to 0 you have a pair of linear equations this way so you see that um, and what you want to do is that first you want to know if there are if there is a um, one unique solution one unique solution or or basically or infinitely many solutions or infinitely many solutions okay or no solutions Uh, basically which of the which of these cases is the case with this for example pair of linear equations and then if there is a if there is one unique solution then we will use those 
we will use the method of cross multiplication in order to find it. So, so what you want to do in order to find out whether there is a one unique solution or infinitely many solutions or no solution is that first let's go over this briefly. If you, if you have one unique solution, you have basically two lines, meaning that, for example, this equation is represented by this line and this equation is represented by this line and the two lines are intersecting are intersecting are intersecting at this point and this point is the is basically is basically uh, it lies on, on on this line for example l1 and also on the line l2 so it's it's a member of this line and also a member of this line so that means that this point whatever the whatever the the, the the coordinates of that point is x1, y1. It it basically satisfies both of these equations because it lies on both the lines representing both those two equations. So, so in this case, you have one unique solution being this this point x1, y1. In this case, where you have one unique solution. Okay. So, so that is that. Now, there are cases where you have basically the two lines that you draw. It basically turns out to be two parallel lines. Two parallel lines. And in this case, of course, you see that there is no common points between these two lines. So you have no uh, common solutions. Or basically, you have, you can say you have you have no solutions at all. Or sometimes you have you have basically the two lines representing representing the two basic equations are basically something like this. For example, you have you have two coincident lines. So you have L1 and L2 over here. Both are practically the same line, and you have basically coincident coincident lines and when you have coincident lines what that means is that you have um, infinitely many common solutions infinitely basically many common solutions which practically means no solution because well infinitely many many common solutions meaning that any point that you pick on any of these two lines is common between the two lines so there is no way to know which point which which point to take all the points are common so basically in this case you have you have no you have no solution no solution here no solution here but here you have, since you have one solution, you can pick that solution. And in this case, what happens is that A1 to B1 is this, I'm sorry, A1 to, uh, A1 to A2 is the same thing as B1 to B2 is the same thing as C1 to C2, meaning that the two lines are, are practically the same lines. Uh, only that only the, I mean the only difference is that for example you have two lines like 2x plus 3y is equal to 6 for example and then you have another line and for example let's say that I multiply this this whole thing by 2 so that's 4x plus 6y is equal to 12 so 2 times 2x is 4x 2 times 3y is equal to 6y 2 times 6 is equal to 12 so this system in this system, basically 1 to 2, I'm sorry, 2 to 4, 2 to 4 is the same thing as 3 to 6, 3 to 6 is the same, the same thing as 6 to 12. So 2 to 4 is the same thing as 1 to 2, 3 to 6 is 1 to 2, and 6 to 12 is 1 to 2, okay? So that means that they are basically the same lines, but um, the coefficients have been have been multiplied by a by a common uh, factor and 
it looks as if the lines are different but they are actually the same lines in this situation what you have is that basically you have um, your c's are different for example you have 2x plus 3y is equal to for example 6 and then here you have um, for example 2x plus 3y is equal to for example 8 okay so uh, a1 to a2 is the same thing as b1 to b2 is not the same thing as c1 to c2 okay so here you have 2 to 2 here you have 3 to 3 so 2 to 2 is the same thing as 1, 3 to 3 is the same thing as 1, but 6 to 8 is the same thing as uh, 3 to 4, 3 fourths. So that means that the two lines are actually parallel, but they are a little bit displaced, meaning that, meaning that they don't, the two lines don't lie on one another, they are a little bit far apart. And that's basically what happens when you have two parallel lines so a1 to a2 is equal to b1 to b2 and then but 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 these are not these two ratios are not equal to c1 to c2 c1 to c2 are different and as a result of that the two lines are not uh, coincident now in this case there is the situation is a little bit different meaning that the lines are not parallel so basically a1 to a2 is not equal to b1 to b2 a1 to a2 is not equal to b1 to b2 that means that they are not parallel and of course when they are not parallel then of course there is no question of c1 to c2 since uh, a1 is not equal to a1 to a2 is not equal to b1 to b2 then even if c1 to c2 is is equal to is equal to any of these ratios it doesn't really matter because the two lines are going to are basically intersecting one another so a1 to a2 is not equal to b1 to b2 so that's basically the situation here so these these three conditions these three conditions over here meaning that this condition over here and this condition over here and this condition over here you need to check for the system of equations that you have if this is the case that that means that you have a solution and then you can use this formula over here in order to find your x and y otherwise there is there is there is either no solution or infinitely many solutions so that's basically what you do over here and that's that's basically what you can do for any uh, pair of parallel or any 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 pair of linear equations in in two variables meaning that first you can check whether you have a whether you have a solution and then when you have the solution then you can either use for example this method of cross multiplication or you can use for example elimination or you can use substitution whatever you want to you want to do you can use in order to find your x and y so so that's basically the whole story here and let me go over and and solve a couple of these questions okay okay so now let's go back to the example that we had and having the the information that we have now let's 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 try to solve these these examples so you have uh you have x minus 3y minus 3 is equal to 0 and you have 3x minus 9y minus 2 is equal to 0 okay so what that means is that your basically here your a1 is equal to 1 and b1 b1 is equal to negative 3 and c1 is equal to negative 3 and a2 is equal to 3 
B2 is equal to negative 9 and C2 is equal to negative 2. So that means that A1 to A2 is equal to 1 third. B1 to B2 is equal to negative 3 to negative 9, which is equal to 1 third. And C1 to C2 is equal to negative 3 to negative 2, which is equal to 3 halves. So you see that you see that a1 to a2 is actually equal to b1 to b2 is not equal to c1 to c2. That means that you have a pair of parallel lines. You have a pair of parallel lines and a pair of parallel lines has basically no common solutions. No common solutions, that means that you don't have to bother about solving the problem. It's just there is, there is simply no solution in the first place. Or, or if you have, for example, something like 2x minus 2x plus y is equal to 5 and 3x plus 2y is equal to 8. Okay, so here a1 to a2 is equal to 2 to 3. b1 to b2 is equal to 1 to 2. And c1 to c2, c1 to c2 is equal to 5 to 8. So you see that a1 to a2 is not equal to b1 to b2. That means that you have a pair of intersecting lines. Intersecting lines. And, uh, and so you have one unique solution. One unique solution. Okay. Since you have one unique solution, you can actually solve the problem. And, in order to solve the problem, you can um, you can use the formulas that that that, that, that we had before, meaning that um, you can write. I'm not going to to do that chart anymore. So I, I, I'm sure you already know those formulas, or you can. Uh, So basically what you can do is that you can actually, you can, um, um, you can set up your equations in this way, meaning that you can write, for example, x, y, and, uh, and 1, okay, and then here you have b, c, a, b, so here you have b, um, here you have b, c, a and B. So basically your B's you have to write them under this column. Your C's you have to write them under, under this column. And then your A's you, you can write here and B's you can write here. So uh, B is basically uh, the, the coefficients of Y. So 1 and 2. So 1 and 2. And the same thing you can write over here 1 and 2. And then the C's are 5 and 8, so you write 5 and 8 over here, and then the A's are 2 and 3, right? And then you can cross multiply here. Okay, and when you cross multiply, remember that first you need to, basically you have something like, you have for example X over you have you have basically x over something for example x over for example i don't know two terms minus another two terms multiplied together for example i don't know just for the sake of let me close this window 
okay so meaning that what I mean by that is that just for the sake of argument let's say that you have I don't know a1 C I don't know for example let's say over here what you would have normally is this is so b1 for example b2 and c1 c2 and then you have you you need to cross multiply in order to get to get the, the denominator here so first you need to you need to write the basically you need to multiply these two terms and these two terms are basically connected together using this line that has this negative slope meaning that the, 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 the line is actually going downwards like this so this this one you do first and then there is another line that is going upwards like this then this one so first you need to, you need to do this one and then this comes after this one comes after this one so you need to be careful about that so so what that means is that so what that means is that you write your basically 1 times 8 so 1 times 8 minus and there is always a negative sign over here and then the 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 uh, the, the basically the, the the product of these two so 2 times 5 for example okay and then over here you have y over and then you have these these two basically this column and this column and then first again you need to do you need to basically do do the line that goes downward so five times three five times three and then minus eight times two eight times two and then finally you have one over basically these two columns so two times two two times two minus one times three one times three okay so then this is equal to x over basically eight minus ten eight minus ten is equal to y over fifteen minus sixteen 15 minus 16 and this is equal to 1 over 4 minus 3 so that means that the x over negative 2 is equal to y over negative 1 is equal to 1 over uh, 1 over 1 okay so what this means is that what this means is that x over negative 2 x over negative 2 is equal to 1 and y over negative 1 is equal to 1 so x is equal to negative 2 times 1 which is equal to negative 2 and y is equal to negative 1 it's actually pretty easy to to use this this method over here so now let's use another method over here and for example this let's use um, I don't know elimination over here let's see what 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 we get as 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 the result over here i got negative 2 and negative 1 so so over here if i multiply this this equation by a by a factor of 2 i will get 4x plus 2y is equal to 10 okay and then take the the opposite of these terms and then add i will get 7x is equal to 18 and so x is equal to I'm sorry no 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 not 7x 3x minus 4x is equal to negative x is equal to 8 minus 10 which is equal to negative 2 so x is equal to 2 negative 4x Is it is it actually the same thing? Negative two. Oh, we have actually we made a mistake over here. You know what the mistake is? The mistake is that you have to write your equations in 
in um, basically in general four I did not write them in general four okay so I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to repeat all of this thing over here so I'm going to, to erase this and also this whole thing over here so first what you need to do is that you write your equation in general form right now this is not written in general form meaning that the general form would be ax plus by plus c is equal to zero meaning that the c has to be on the other side of the of the equal sign so so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to write this as um, as 2x plus y minus 5 is equal to 0 and and then 3x plus 2y minus 8 is equal to 0 okay so now basically my c's are basically negative and so again you can you can do the same thing you can go for basically x y and 1 and then here you can write your b's c and a and again b here so b1 and b2 is basically 1 and 2 1 and 2 and again 1 and 2 so c is negative 5 and negative 8 negative 5 and negative 8 your a's are 2 and 3 okay and then you can cross multiply here this way you need to be careful about those signs I mean about writing your equations in, in general form <coughs> okay so so now I can write this as x over basically 1 times negative 8 minus 2 times negative 5 okay is equal to y over negative 5 times 3 2 times negative 8 minus 2 times negative 8 and is equal to 1 over 2 times 2 2 times 2 minus 3 times 1 3 times 1 okay and then you can write this as x over negative 8 minus negative 10 and that is equal to y over negative 15 minus negative 16 and that is equal to 1 over 4 minus 4 minus 3 okay and now you can now you can write this as well this is the same thing as negative 8 plus 10 this is negative 15 plus 16 and that's the same thing so so you can write this as x over 10 minus 8 is equal to 2 is equal to 2 1 basically y over 16 minus 15 is equal to 1 is equal to 1 over 4 minus 3 is equal to 1 so that means that x divided by 2 is equal to 1 and y divided by 1 is equal to 1 so that means that x is equal to 2 times 1 x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 1 okay so that's that's the that's the right answer here now let's use the method of elimination and do the same thing using the method of elimination so i can i can i can basically use i can basically use um, for example take this equation over here take it as one and two and then multiply one by a factor of two one times two gives me four x uh, plus two y negative 10 is equal to 0 okay and I'm going to take the take this take these two equations together 
I'm going to take these two equations together. So this is the same thing as actually the same, the same, the same as one, but, but a little bit, I mean, changed it a little bit. So now if I take the algebraic opposite of these terms, and then add these together. These y's will be cancelled out. And then 3x minus 4x is equal to uh, uh, negative x. And then negative 8 plus 10 is equal to 10 minus 8, which is equal to 2 is equal to 0. So negative x is equal to negative 2x is equal to 2. That's your x. And then, for example, take equation number 1. And write 2 times x, which is equal to 2, plus y minus 5 is equal to 0. So 4 plus y minus 5 is equal to 0. So negative 1 plus y is equal to 0. So y is equal to uh, y is equal to 1. So y is equal to 1, x is equal to 2 y is equal to 1 x is equal to 2 it's actually it's actually not that bad i mean the, the, this method of cross multiplication and you don't even need to remember that, that 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 formula as long as you basically set up your equations uh, this way of course i i did i i I had to erase that, but but as as long as you see, set up your equations that way and do do a cross multiplication chart, then you will be able to actually write them pretty easily like this, and then do the calculation. Okay, so that was basically one thing. Now the next thing that we have is another exercise. Okay, so so the next question that we have is 3x minus 5y is 3x minus 5y is equal to 20 and 6x minus 10y 6x minus 10y is equal to 40. Okay. So now you can see that just by looking at this equation, you can see that yeah, these two terms are positive, these two terms are negative, and these two terms are both positive. And 3 times 2 is equal to 6, 5 times 2 is equal to 10, 20 times 2 is equal to 40. So that means that basically these are actually coincident lines, meaning that if you, for example, take this equation and divide everything by 2, you will get this equation over here. And the ratios of these are, are, are actually the same, meaning that A12, for example, A2 is equal to 3 to 6, which is equal to 1 to 2. And B1 to B2 is equal to negative 5 to negative 10, which is equal to, again, 1 to 2. And C1 to C2 is equal to 20 to 40, which is equal to 1 to 2. So A1 to A2 is equal to, for example, B1 to B2 is equal to C1 to C2. And that basically means that you have, um, you have a pair of coincident lines. coincident lines and that basically means that you have infinitely you have infinitely many solutions okay you have infinitely many solutions and then there is of course no definite solution here so you don't have to bother about solving the problem or let's say that you have, uh, let's say that you have x minus 3y minus 7 is equal to 0. And then you have 3x 
minus 3y minus 15 is equal to 0. So here there seems to be no, I mean, the, you, you seem, we seem to have a solution here because um, a1 to a2 is 1 third, a b1 to b2 is 1, and then here you have, so basically a1 to a2 is not equal to b1 to b2. Not equal to b1 to, this is equal to, this is equal to 1 thirds. And this, this, this over here is equal to 1. So these are not equal, so you have one uh, unique solution. One unique solution. Okay. So now in order to find the solution, the, the equations are already written in um, general form, so you don't need to worry about that. So all you need to do is that you write basic your x, y, and 1 over here, and b, c, a, and again v, right? So b is basically the, the coefficient of uh, your y over here, so it's negative 3 and negative 3, negative 3 and negative 3, over here again negative 3, and negative 3 over here. C is negative 7 to negative 15. Negative 7 to negative 15. And A is 1 to 3 over here. Is 1 to 3. And then if you do the cross multiplication, you will basically have something like this. So you can write this as you can write it as x over basically negative 3 times negative 15 minus negative 3 times negative 7. Okay, that's equal to y over negative 7 times 3, negative 7 times times 3 minus negative 15 times 1 negative 15 times 1 and that is equal to 1 over 1 times negative 3 1 times negative 3 minus 3 times negative 3 3 times negative 3 and then here you have x over 3 times negative 3 times negative 15 is equal to 45 minus uh, 3 times 7 is equal to 21 and it's positive 21 and then you have over here you have y over negative 21 minus negative 15 and here you have and here you have 1 over negative 3 minus negative 9. And that's equal to, well, 45 minus 21 is equal to 24. So that's 24. So x over 24 is equal to, that's 21, negative 21 plus 15. So negative 1 plus 15 is equal to, uh, negative 16 y over negative 16 and that's equal to uh, that's equal to basically negative 3 plus 9 so 9 minus 3 is equal to 6 right so so then uh, basically that means that x over 24 is equal to 1 over 6 divide both the denominators by 6 you will get you will get 1 and 4 that means that x divided by 4 is equal to 1 so x is equal to x by 4 is equal to 1 so that means that x is equal to 4 that means that x is equal to 4 and then x and then y divided by negative 16 is equal to 1 to 6 
So divide by divide by two here, you will get a three. Divide by two, you will get an eight. So so that means that y over negative eight is equal to one third. So that means that three y is equal to negative eight, and y is equal to negative eight thirds. Y is equal to negative eight thirds. Okay. So I hope that the answers are are actually right. Let me check number four, three point five. Number four. There is something wrong with the y that we have calculated here. Otherwise, the x is there is no problem with the x. Let me see. Okay, so I, I, actually, the, the 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 problem is over here, meaning that I have I have written negative twenty one plus fifteen. I have written as negative sixteen, which is basically wrong. Twenty one minus fifteen is equal to six, so that's negative six actually. It should be negative six. So negative six, and then you have this thing over here is also wrong. So what that means is that y over negative six is equal to one over six divided by six. You get one and one. So y over negative one is equal to one y over negative 1 is equal to 1 so y is equal to negative 1 and that's basically the right answer here okay so that's basically that okay so we have a couple more questions over here and let me go through the questions Okay, so so you have a pair of linear equations, and that is two x plus three y is two x plus three y is equal to seven, and you have a minus b times x plus a plus b times y is equal to 3 times a is equal to 3a plus b minus 2. Okay, so that's basically that. Now, you want to know this is your pair of linear equations. You want to know for which values of a and b, for, for which values of, of a and b, does the following, does this pair of linear equations have an infinite number of, uh, does this thing over here, have an infinite infinite number of number of number of solutions an infinite number of solutions so an infinite number of solutions means that the two lines are coincident meaning that um an infinite number of solutions an infinite number of number of solutions what that means is that the two lines the two lines are coincident meaning that you have basically this line over here 
and the other line is exactly on the same basic exactly the same line and in this case what happens is that you have basically a1 to a2 is equal to b1 to b2 is equal to c1 to c2 that's basically the condition when the when this happens so so what you can do is that you can write basically your a1 is basically 2 over here and a2 is a minus b your b1 is 3 your b2 is a plus b and your c1 is equal to 7 actually you need to you need to take this take take all of these to the other side of the equation Otherwise, it doesn't really matter because um, both of them are on, on the same side of the equation and the, and the negatives would cancel out. So you don't have to worry about that. So you can write, simply write this as 7 and 3a plus b minus 2. 3a plus b minus 2. Okay. So now you can solve this, this equation over here. You can form if you can form a basically a pair of linear equations from this from this from these two equations and then solve for a and b and then for those values of a and b then the this system of linear equations is going to have an infinite number of solutions. So first of all what happens is that for example you can take these two together and take these two together okay and write it as 2 over a minus b 2 over a minus b is equal to 7 over 7 over 3a plus b minus 2 and then you can cross multiply you can cross multiply here so this is equal to 2 times 3a plus b minus 2 is equal to 7 times a minus b okay and that is equal to 2 times 3 is equal to 6a plus 2b minus 4 is equal to 7a minus 7b and take everything to the same kind to, to the same side of the equation 6a plus 2b minus 4 minus 7a plus 7b is equal to 0 so 6a plus minus 7a is equal to negative a and 2b plus 7b is equal to, to 9b and then you have uh, so these two are also taken care of and then you have a negative 4 over here is equal to 0 I call this equation number 1 so this is a and this is 9 and then you can take uh, you can take these two together, these two equations together, meaning that you can write 3 over a plus b is equal to 7 over 3a plus b minus 2. So that means that if you then cross multiply, you will get 3 times 3a plus b minus 2 is equal to 7 times a plus b. So that's 9a plus 3b minus 6 is equal to 7a plus 7b and 9a plus 3b minus 6 minus 7a minus 7b is equal to 0 and 9a minus 7a is equal to 2a and 3b minus 7b is equal to negative 4b and you have a negative 6 over here is equal to 0 I call it equation number 2 so so then basically you have negative a plus 9b minus 4 is equal to 0 and 2a minus 4b minus 6 is equal to minus 6 is equal to 0. I have a system, a, a pair of linear equations 1 and 2. Now I can use the method of elimination or cross multiplication both are possible I use cross multiplication so again you can 
write your variables here so instead of x and y i have to write a and b because the variables are a and b a and b and this is one over here and i have basically these um, b c a b over here so b c a and b over here but remember that these b c a and b are actually the coefficients of these variables not 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 the actual variables that i have used in the, that are used in this in this equation so then you you can write this as um, 9 so b is 9 and negative 4 9 and negative 4 c would be negative 4 and negative 6 negative 4 and negative 6 and a is basically negative 1 and 2 negative 1 and 2 and then for b you have um, 9 and negative 4 9 and negative 4 and then you need to cross multiply so then you can write this as a over basically 9 times negative 6 9 times negative 6 minus uh, negative 4 times negative 4 negative 4 is equal to b over these are the variables b over negative 4 times 2 negative 4 times 2 minus negative 6 times negative 1 is equal to 1 over negative 1 times negative 4 negative 4 minus 9 times 2 9 times 2 and so you have a over 9 times 6 is equal to I think it's 54 so that's negative 54 minus positive 16 is equal to is equal to b over negative 8 minus positive 6 positive 6 is equal to 1 over positive 4 minus positive 18 okay so now 54 and 16 is equal to 60 70 negative 70 is equal to b over negative 14 is equal to 1 over negative 18 negative 14 okay so that means that a over negative 70 is equal to 1 1 over negative 14 uh, so 70 is the same thing as 2 times uh, basically 7 times 10 mm, this is 7 so this these two negative signs you can cancel out and this is the same thing as 7 times 10 this is the same thing as 7 times 2 so 7 and 7 you can cancel out that means that you have a over 10 is equal to 1 over 2 that means that 2a is equal to 10 a is equal to 5 okay a is equal to 5 and then here you have b over negative 14 is equal to 1 over negative 14 cancel them out and negatives you can also cancel out so b is equal to 1 b is equal to 1 so that's basically the values of a and b a is equal to 5 b is equal to 1 okay <clears throat> so um, now you have two you have another pair of linear equations and for this we want to do something else there's a sheet over here okay so now we have another pair of linear equations 
which are basically 3x plus y, which is basically 3x plus y is equal to 1, okay? And the other pair is basically the other, the other equation is 2k minus 1, 2k minus 1 times x plus k minus 1 times y times y is equal to 2k plus 1. 2k plus 1. So you now you want to know for which value of k, so this is a pair of linear equations. You want to know for which value of k, value of k, um, will the, will this basic pair of linear equations have, have no solution? have basically no solution okay so if basically if you have basically a pair of coincident lines like this a pair of coincident lines mm, co in basically a pair of coincident lines basically you have infinitely many solutions infinitely many solutions okay so which is not what you're looking for you're looking for no solution no solution is basically where the two lines do not intersect and so they are parallel lines parallel lines and then you have basically no solutions and no solutions means that um, basically a1 to a2 is the same thing as b1 to b2 but is not the same thing as c1 to c2 okay so so you're looking for you're actually looking for this you're looking for this case over here okay so so <clears throat> um, so how can you actually solve this this problem okay so let's first set up the the equations and then we take care of the rest so here we are saying that a1 to a2 a1 to a2 is equal to basically 3, 2, and you see that your c's are both on the other side of the, on one side of the equation, so you don't need to basically, you don't need to take them to the other side of the equation. Uh, I mean, for example, if you took this one to the other side, it would be a negative one. Or if you take this whole 2k plus 1 to the other side, that would be negative of, of 2k plus 1. So then in the ratio the two negative signs would simply cancel out and then you would get the same thing meaning that you would get 1 over 2k plus 1 so you don't need to worry about the fact that they are not that, that the two equation are not have not been written in general form um, so um, but of course this is only in this particular case each each case you need to think about it I don't know and if and, and, and if it's necessary you write your equations in 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 the general form so now a1 to a2 is is supposed to be is is basically 3 over 3 over um, 2k minus 1 2k minus 1 and this is supposed to be equal to b1 to b2 so b1 is is 1 over here and b2 is um, basically k minus 1 and this is supposed to this is supposed to be not equal to c1 to c2 so c1 to c2 is 1 over 2k plus 1 okay so now let's see how we can solve this problem 
So this is easy. Of course, this way, <coughs> this way you can um, since these two are equal, you can take these two together, right? And then if If you can take, for example, you can take this with this this one or with this one doesn't really matter because you would, I think you would you would you would get the the same the same answer. Let of course I I'll try. So let let me first go for for example this case over here. If I take one over k minus one is not equal to one over two k plus one okay i think the ratios are going to work for us so if i cross multiply one over uh, one times 2k plus one is 2k plus one is not equal to uh, k minus one and 2k basically minus k is not equal to negative one and negative minus one okay now 2k minus k is equal to k is not equal to negative 2. So this is the value of k. I mean this is the value that you have to exclude from the values of k and this is negative 2. So now let's see what happens if you t if you take these two together. I think you would get the same the same value. So now 3 over 2k minus 1 is not equal to 1 over 2k plus 1. 2k plus 1. So let me erase all of this thing over here. And this is k not equal to negative 2. k not equal to negative 2 I got. So here I have 3 times 2k plus 1 is not equal to 1 times 2k 2k minus 1 okay and that is 6k plus 3 is not equal to 2k minus 1 and 6k minus 2k 6k minus 2k is not equal to negative 1 negative 4 i'm sorry negative 3 negative 3 and 4k 4k is not equal to negative 4 uh, 6k minus 2k is equal to 4k And k is not equal to negative 4 over 4, which is equal to negative 1. Well, you know, this is a little bit... I mean, um, when you say this is equal to... When you say a is equal to b, not equal to... Not equal to c, for example... So when when a is equal to b, then then you can you can conclude that basically c is not equal to b, and also c is not equal to a, because a and b are the same thing basically. Mm. But as you can see over here, three over two k minus one is not equal to one over two k plus one. 3 times 2k plus 1 is equal to 1 over 1 times 2k minus 1. 6k plus 3 is not equal to 2k minus 1. So 6k minus 2k is not equal to negative 1, negative 3. So 6k minus 2k is equal to 4k not equal to negative 4. And k is not equal to negative 1. Okay. Um... Okay, so let me see. Now, 
Now let's, um, this is giving me k is not equal to negative 1. So this is giving me k is not equal to negative 1. Okay. Now let me take these two parts together. Let's see what, what this k is actually supposed to be equal to. And then we would exclude one of these values from it. So, so basically 3 over 2k minus 1 is supposed to be equal to, is supposed to be equal to 1 over k minus 1. 1 over k minus 1. So if you cross multiply, you would get 3 times k minus 1 is equal to 2k minus 1. So that's 3k minus 3 is equal to 2k. Um, there is no, of course, no parentheses here, anything like that. So I have 2k minus 1 and 3k minus 2k is equal to negative 1 plus 3. So that's equal to k is equal to 2. Okay, so here k, basically k is supposed to be equal to 2. And here what is what it's giving me is that k is supposed to be not equal to 2. Okay, I'm sorry, that's negative 2. Okay, so... So now let me see what the answer here is. Uh, two part two. Um. Okay, so for whatever reason, the answer here is basically For whatever reason, the, an the answer is 2 here, okay? So now the answer is k is equal to 2. And let's see what happens if k is equal to 2 here, okay? So I want to basically write this, write this whole thing over here so that the, the equations become 3x plus y is equal to 1, and then if k is equal to 2, 2k minus 1 would be 4 minus 1, which is equal to 3, so 3x and k minus 1 would be 2 minus 1 is equal to 1, so plus y is equal to 4 plus 1 is equal to 5, so you see over here a by, a by, um, a1 to a2 is equal to 1, and b1 to b2 is equal to 1 and c1 to c2 is equal to 1 fifths which is exactly what we are looking for of course meaning that a1 to a2 is n is equal to b1 to b2 is not equal to c1 to c2 okay so basically in in the in the um, basically in the relationship that we set up over here i Basically, this part tells me k is what k is not supposed to be equal to, which is, of course, I don't care about that in this example. Um, I'm, I, what I want to know is that what 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 k is supposed to be equal to. So it makes sense that uh, I mean not 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 totally. At uh, I mean to be honest with you, it doesn't make complete sense to me. But it kind of makes sense that I'm, I'm looking for the value that k is supposed to be equal to, and that is given to me by this part. And k is equal to 2 is basically the value that I got by basically equating these two parts together in these two equations, and then I got k is equal to 2. So that's basically the whole story here. 
Uh, if you are more interested in, 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 in this example, you can kind of investigate it yourself. But I'm not really sure if I'm ever going to go back over here. Um, probably later, but not right now, really. Okay, so we have a couple more questions here. And um, we will go through them as well. So I'll see you in the next video.